I decided not to work out this morning just because I needed some sleep and I have time to do it later. Uh, but I have to go early to class because my group is preparing for our presentation. Eight dwelling units per acre. I uh, currently have to uh, procure or pay fees um, to more greatly incentivize these high density developments. We exacerbate that change that already, or that, that dichotomy that already exists. You know, maintenance is not being done in all these parks, and that's one thing that we feel the city should be responsible for is consistent trash pickup and like cleanup of bathrooms. Um, well, excellent. Okay, you have another little quick potty break for the next group? Yeah, okay. Um, and we looked at a number of studies that show that if we really want infill projects to be successful, you need people coming in to the downtown area and city to enjoy those services and to spend money and to have community interaction. And when you have bike lanes, that provides a fun activity for people from the, on the exterior, uh, you know, ar arterial corridors to come into the city. It also increases people's feeling of safety significantly to bike into town. And it just serves as one more excuse to make a trip into town. It's healthy for people, it's more environmentally friendly. And now that we have this new big tax base that's going to raise you know, a quarter of a billion dollars in the next five years while they're repainting automobile lanes. We can also use that money to be painting bike lanes as well. But there are clearly trends that we see, some of which may have to deal with, uh, with inequity and some that actually do make some sense, which I'll explain. But by Bonforte and Nancy Lewis, those are clearly the two nicest parks that we saw, and they were around the you know brightest color census blocks, which means the wealthiest park, versus Flanagan, which is the park you saw with the bathroom, the porta potty that clearly had been neglected by city maintenance for probably a long time, is in this block where it's pretty far away um, from those higher income areas. We nailed it, but that was a practice round, and the real presentation happens tomorrow in front of the Parks and Recreations group of Colorado Springs. Okay, I'm gonna go make some gains. Puffed corn and dried oats lives. Antioxidant rich, simple carbohydrate, banana, blueberry, and acai ice cream. Just had a really nice glazing session, and I think this is my last piece. And it's kind of crazy. Glaze <laughs> that big bowl, that salsa bowl, that big bowl. This really awesome. Oh. That really awesome vase, that really, really awesome vase. It was a very nice glazing session, last class of the block, and now I have to go to my last group meeting to finish our project 100%. I like I like the term. She said, she's, that's literally like, I was not going that direction at all with it. And she's like, she's like this is what your argument is. Um, we, we set out to see if the parks fit um, the required demographics, yeah. and then we couldn't 
answer that question because the parts were non-functioning and she like what we did um to get an understanding of why there is this disparity that we found in the parks is use a program um, that we've used in our college experience and in our department called gis uh, um all right so obviously uh what we want to ensure here uh, based on that photo you saw previously uh that all bath bathroom maintenance and trash pickup uh is being done on schedule so that was my last group meeting for this project for my class. Tomorrow we are going to the Colorado Springs Parks and Recreation Department and we're presenting them with that speech. I think it's going to go well. And then after that I have to write this little like three page summary of my experience with the class and then I am done with seventh block, meaning I have one more class of college. One more. Much love, dream extreme. I think I'm going to go to the boot camp class in the morning. Thank <laughs> you.